Hey everyone, uh, I'm Jamie Sable and I want to tell you a little bit about how we have set up our synthetic biology cure at the University of Memphis. Um, first, I'd like to acknowledge my partner in crime with this. That's Dr. Judy Cole. Um, this is her right here. Uh, and this is with us with our students in the very first um, run of the course. Um, but Judy and I were really interested in creating a better lab for our students. And in particular, we wanted to um, get them to have some more, uh, some better research experiences. Um, so we attended the AR Care Workshop in the summer of 2017, which was the first uh, summer that it ran. Um, okay, so what we came up with was a standalone course that we called Synthetic Biology. Um, it was three credits. And we had prerequisites of both GenBio 1 and 2 for that. And we had a co-requisite of cell biology. So cell biology at Memphis does not have a lab associated with it. And so this is kind of a stand-in for that, but it's not required. So we do ask that students be in cell biology um, while they're taking it, but they don't have to take it. Um, now, we have made a few exceptions to that when we've had some students who are further along in the program who have wanted to, to be able to have that experience. And so we have, um, have made some exceptions. But we ran um, this two days a week, Tuesday and Thursday, for three hours each day. And we made it clear that students would have to come in outside of, um, outside of regular class time as well. So just a little bit of a timeline of how this worked for us. So like I said, we did um, AR Care the summer of 2017. That fall then, Judy and I had lots of meetings to decide exactly how we were gonna do this. We also wrote some proposals and had meetings with various people on campus to get buy-in from both our department and our college, and that included some money. So we were able to get um, funding, some funding from both the department and our college. In spring 2018, we did all of the course approval paperwork. We got, we were gathering all the supplies and Nathan Reyna actually came to campus to give a seminar to our faculty, which was really helpful in getting buy-in from more of our faculty on this idea. So the summer of 2018, we did a test run just to make sure that we had everything in place and we uh, could troubleshoot before we were running things with students. Um, and so then in fall of 2018, we did the first run of the course. Um, there were things that worked and there were a lot of things that didn't work. And so in, then, in the spring and the summer of 2019, we did revisions to the course and ran that the second time just this last fall. Okay, so these were the course objectives that we came up with that we uh, used for the first time and most of these have really stuck through for the second time as well. I'm not going to read through these because you'll have access to these so you're welcome to come back and take a look and use any of them that are helpful to you. But here's what I wanted to show you was our um, our syllabus from the first time. So again, this is a little bit different than how um, Nathan is running this at Wachita because that's the lab with genetics for him. For us, this is a standalone course. Um, and so it is, and it's three credits, and so there, there was a decent amount that we had involved. So just to get started, you'll see the paper digestions and ligations um, that you guys will be doing as well if you haven't already done them. We did a lot of introduction to iGEM registry and methods. So this was really similar to actually what we did at the AR Cure workshop. Um, we did do some pipetting for accuracy. Now, again, this is a little bit different. Uh, you know, when Nathan is doing his, those are genetic students and they're at least juniors usually. We had, a lot of them are sophomores, but they had, do not have a lot of, of experience. So we did have to do some things just showing them how to do some of the basic techniques. We then had a couple weeks where we did the test run and project planning. And again, this was a lot like what we did at AR Care, where we actually just ran through the entire process um, from, you know, getting the tube out of the freezer to uh, digesting and ligating and uh, picking colonies, doing mini preps, all of that stuff. We did a whole test run with them and they were also planning their projects while we were doing that. So we did have a practical exam to make sure that they understood the various things that we had um, had run through in the tests. And then um, we, by the end of the, what is that, fourth week, 
they were giving presentations of their planned projects. Um, and so what I didn't mention is that through through all of these weeks here, we're of course meeting with them and talking with them about the projects that they're planning, answering questions, providing support, things like that. And then we really cut them loose and let them start working on their projects. Um, we did have a lab notebook midterm check, and this was primarily to make sure that they were really, you know, it was an incentive to make sure that they were really taking detailed notes. Um, and so most of the semester was them doing the doing their projects. We would be there, we would help with support and questions, help them with troubleshooting, but most of the time was them really going with the experiments they had planned, figuring out what was going wrong, um, and getting to a point of, of um, you'll see here, I, I skipped a little bit here, but we did have them, um, we wanted them to be doing analysis by the time we got to November so that uh, they would not, you know, so that they would have a chance to actually be able to do analysis before we get to the end. So, oops, I went too far. So at the very end, we did have them give um, oral presentations. Now, in the beginning, we planned to have a poster session. Um, unfortunately, this first semester, students really didn't get very far at all. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what we did for the second time to make that, that uh, to help that along, I guess. Um, so we didn't end up doing the poster session, but they did do oral presentations. Um, and then we did have them all do um, a device analysis paper. So they did write a final paper where they walked through the whole thing, what they, all of their, um, what all of their planning was, how they actually went in and did it, and you know, kind of what they would have done had they been able to do some analysis. Okay, so this was what our um, point breakdown looked like our first time. Um, so we did have that practical exam, we did have notebook checks, but you'll see most of it really did have to do with um, their presentations, oral presentations. Um, again, we didn't end up doing the poster presentation to the department and their final notebook. So those are most of the points, I should say, except for our benchmarks. And so again, like Nathan has done, we did have um, benchmarks that we set up. These are a little bit different than what his, his are. Um, and so again, I'm not gonna read through this for you. Um, you can come back and take a look. And again, feel free if you want to use some of these ideas. But these were our benchmarks and they were worth 50 points, which was half of their grade. So, I mean, the, the good news is that students definitely learned a lot of techniques that, and they were able to do them very well on their own. Um, the, the bad news is that they really required a lot more support in the beginning than we ante anticipated. And so, um, you know, like I said, after our, those first couple of weeks, we really just cut them loose and let them go and do their projects. That didn't go so well. So just two weeks of walking them through the whole procedure wasn't quite enough. And so that's why for the second time, we've actually, in, we, we incorporated a lot more, um, a lot more support in the beginning, but also a lot of the students were really freaked out by the fact that they didn't have a good sense of what their grade was throughout the semester. So, so much of their grade was really something that came at the end of the semester and they all really thought they were all gonna fail the course. Um, and so we also put in a lot more things for um, just small pieces of grading, ways for them to check themselves, way for, ways for us to check them, but just different ways to be able to, um, to give them a better sense of where they were throughout, where their grade was throughout the semester. So the important thing though is the science happened. We definitely had unexpected results. We definitely had experiments that didn't work. And the thing that I thought was really the most telling is that students, beca they became really good at troubleshooting and not just your basic kind of troubleshooting, but really getting into thinking about the science and thinking about what went wrong and thinking about the next steps that they could take. And so that was really great to see. Um, and so when we, like I said, when we started in uh, fall, we provided a lot more support in the beginning, both in scientific content. So we realized that they just didn't have enough science understanding yet about um, like plasmids and and things like that. So we did we did more of that in the beginning, and we also did more um, helping them to understand the methods themselves. Um, and then also to provide more opportunities for them to show us and themselves what they know and to help their grade along.
And so this is what, I'm not going to show you the whole syllabus again because it looks somewhat syllable, syllable. It looks somewhat similar. But um, here's what our grading looks like in the fall. So you can see we had a lot, first of all, a lot more points. We only had 100 points in the first time and 50 of those came from our benchmarks. And so here, 100 is coming from our final benchmark. Um, so lots of different things here. We did some worksheets. We did some quizzes. We did a data sheet. Um, we made them do a, they had to practice putting, uh, practice doing validation for their parts. Um, again, another quiz. We had a written proposal that went along with their proposal presentation. Uh, still lab notebook check. But we also added in weekly progress reports. And so these were things where every single week before they came in, they had to post to the discussion board what they had done the following week and what they were planning to do the next week. And that was both, it was for two reasons, honestly. One was to help them start to get a sense of what they needed to be writing in terms of methods, but also so that we could sort of have a check and, and say, wait, wait, no, that's not the next step. Or, um, well, I guess not or, but also one, one additional um, thing is that when you have these multiple groups, it's difficult to keep track of what they're all doing. And so having that weekly check-in reminded us, like, this is where they are. This is probably where they'll need some support this week. Um, so we did also have them do a draft paper this time to get some feedback and then their final paper. Final presentation, we still did that. Um, as I said, benchmark, our benchmarks were very similar, um, but they just took up less of the overall grade. And then we did also do a final lab notebook check. So here's kind of what it looks like for our overall structure of what we're doing now and, and how we plan to continue doing this in the future. So you'll see in the beginning, we're definitely doing a lot of teaching them how to do the techniques but they are also working on um, designing and developing their research project. Um, we have it built so that they should be able to reach the benchmarks at various points along this as long as they're doing the work and um, keeping up with um, you know, what the next steps are and basically planning their weeks so that they can maximize uh, how they're doing. But you can see how our benchmarks then fit into this timeline. At the end, we certainly hope that they have at least three parts with gel confirmation and that they're able to demonstrate function for that. Um, and then we have that final report and final presentation. And so this seems to be working really well for us at this point. Again, though, please remember, this is they're meeting six hours a week, so twice a week for three hours each. So if that's not something that you're planning to do, you'll, you'll obviously want to uh, adjust some of these, these things. So quick acknowledgements here. Obviously, Dr. Judy Cole, um, I'm giving this presentation, but she is absolutely my partner in every single way. Um, Maya was also our TA for both the first and the second run. We are, she has just graduated, and we are really going to miss her, so we're looking for a new TA. And then um, these were, like I said, all of our students in our first year. Obviously, I'd like to thank um, AR Cure and um, Nathan. Um, but I'd also like to thank all of my lab members. So this is actually a little bit of an old picture, my, but this was the, the lab group that was helping me out with thinking about some of the research questions we might be asking about this cure as well that I'll talk to you about a little bit later this week. Um, but here's my contact information. I am always happy to chat about what we did, to answer questions, to help you troubleshoot, whatever. Please don't hesitate at all to uh, reach out. I'm happy to chat. Thanks for listening.